All right. This problem, everybody do this, right? Get your hand, go like, take your hand like this. Go like this, okay? Go like this. I don't want you to get writer's cramp with this problem. That's the problem, okay? Because it could happen, all right? A lot of writing about to go down here. A lot of writing. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I'm not going to be able to fit all this. So I'm going to shift the camera, see, and maybe you guys will be able to see over there. I'm just going to hope that, that maybe I can get that to show up. We'll try. I'm going to try. Okay? I'm going to try. Um, well, let me see over here. You can see over here. Let me see. Hold on. Just try. I'm going to win an Oscar for this. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I don't know how far I can write, but we'll see. All right. You ready? So, verify. Show that this statement is that statement. All right, so we go back to this process of we're, we're going to use the toolbox. All the identities are on the board. Okay. Now, with regards to the toolbox, we're supposed to look for essentially three things that, that make the radar go off. One of them is squared terms, which we do have, but really some, some, some not fun squared terms because they have a different variable. So that's no fun. We look for squared terms, we look for fractions, and we look for situations where we can factor. I can't factor this. I see the plus and the minus, but I can't factor these. Right? So this is, again, the new stuff, right? If we see parentheses following one of our sine or cosine, the only thing you can do with that is expand it. Okay? Now, what that looks like is really horrible. Let's see if I can get this on screen. Okay? So, what does this become? That becomes cosine x, cosine y, minus sine x, sine y, right? This, I know this is, this is no fun for, for those of you at home, but this is the expansion of that term right there. The cosines go together, the sines go together. We use the opposite operation. I'm multiplying this times that. So maybe I can color code this. So we'll keep that in black. We'll do this in red. Okay? So here I get cosine x, cosine y plus sine x, sine y. And then I have this. Let me check my framing of the camera to make sure we got all that up. Uh, yeah, you can see it, hopefully. Why don't you guys get your cell phones up and point your flashlights at this? I'm just kidding. Okay? So here's what we have. We have this product, this unholy mess of a product, equal to that. Now, again, I apologize for those of you at home. You can't really see it. But if you pay really close attention to this product, like really super sharp focus, you notice that this is the same thing. And this is the same thing. And in one of these there's a minus, and in one of these there's a plus, and what do we call those? Good, good, conjugates, right? They don't look like the conjugates we're used to, but they're conjugates. Two binomials with the same thing in the front, the same thing in the back, one with a minus, one with a plus. And what do you get when you multiply conjugates? You get the difference of squares. So this becomes... Now here's how I'm going to write this in, this in the interest of time and space. 
okay? When I square cosine x, cosine y, stay with me, cosine x, cosine y, cosine x, cosine y, that's what I would get if I multiplied those. So I'd have two cosine x's and two cosine y's. And multiplication's commutative. So I'd write the cosines next to the cosines and the y's next to the y's like that, and then they're both squared. So that's why I'm writing this, okay? Minus sine squared x sine squared y, and that's equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared y. Now when we look at that, and we keep in mind that we're trying to do a verification, our job when we do verifications is to show that this is the same as that. Okay, and if we pull the shade down, because this can get pretty intimidating pretty fast, if I just look at the spot where I'm at right now, you know, it, it, it'd be a silly question to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Why isn't this the same as this? Right? What is keeping this from being that? Let me ask it a third time. What do I have over here that I don't have over there, right? And there's a couple of things. Like, first of all, there's this. I don't have one of these over here, right? So I, I don't want that in the problem anymore. Now, we can't, you watch this, we can't get rid of it. But we don't get rid of something by dividing or subtracting it out. We get rid of something in these verifications by substituting something else in its place. That's how we get rid of things we don't want in these problems, by substituting. Do you see where this is headed, maybe? I don't want cosine squared y, so I want to take it out. What can I put in its place? One minus sine squared. It's a doozy. I get it. I know. I know. Okay. But this is a, a, a what's the opposite of a double negative? A double positive. Right. Win win. It's a win win. Not only did I get rid of the thing from this side that I didn't want, I brought in something to the problem that does exist over here. That must be a good step to take. And at the same time, maybe you're seeing this as well, now that you're, you've got caught up to speed, you notice that I don't want this either. Because this side doesn't have a sine squared x in it. So in its place, I'm going to put 1 minus cosine squared x. And forgive me if I'm taking too many liberties by just plopping these things in here, but if you've been keeping pace, you've done this enough that you know. And if you haven't been keeping pace, whose fault is that? I'm sorry if that hurts your feeling. Okay? So, we have cosine squared x. We still have a sine squared y. And this is still equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared y. So there we use one of our tools, right? So let's simplify what we get from that. This is going to get multiplied here and here. Now I'm, going to, I'm just going to write small. Hopefully you'll be able to pick it up. So we have cosine squared x when I do that, minus cosine squared x sine squared y. Now this next part can get a little gymnastic-y. I'm going to do a little, 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 you know, a couple of cartwheels at once. I don't know how you do two cartwheels at once. You could really just do one cartwheel two times in a row. But that's, we're going to try to do two cartwheels at once. We're going to break the barriers, the physical barriers of gymnastics. Okay? Mathematic gymnastics. Mathnastics. Okay? Because I have to distribute this into this quantity. However, stay with me, 
I'm also subtracting this product. So while I'm distributing this into this quantity to get that product, I also have to take the opposite of what I'm getting. So this is going to result in a minus sine squared y. Do we see that? Minus sine squared y plus cosine squared x sine squared y. And that's equal to this. I'm running out of room. Forgive my laziness. But take a look. Take a look. Right? I told you you could get a hand cramp from this one. Do you see it? When you now when you look and you say, oh, this looks terrible. But if that wasn't there, I'd be in good shape. Good thing it's opposite is right here. Because they go away. And we're left with just cosine squared x minus sine squared y. I will tell you, I gave you a problem similar to this to do on the homework. Okay? Because it's worth practicing. Like, you may have just sat there, you may have just sat there and said, well, that all makes perfect sense. Thank you for explaining it so well, Mr. Jackson. Let me repay you the favor of this glorious gift that you just gave us by nominating you for the Golden Apple Award. Maybe that's what you're saying to yourself. Please don't. I don't deserve it. Okay? If that's what you were thinking, don't do that. All right? Um, but there is a, the only way to actually get better at a problem like that is to do it again. If you have to do it with this right next to you, so be it. Okay? That's a doozy. But a really cool problem.